Starkiller Base was an ice planet located in the Unknown Regions, which became home to the First Order around 30 years after the Battle of Endor. The successor group of the Galactic Empire used the forested world as a base of operations, choosing it because of the unique deposits of energy transmitting crystals. The planet was eventually transformed into a superweapon, consuming nearby stars as a source of power before moving onto new star systems. The name Starkiller may have been attributed to the base due to this characteristic, as it essentially killed stars. Capable of destroying entire planets, the weapon ran of quintessence, an omnipresent dark energy in the galaxy, meaning the First Order had a nearly unlimited power source. The dark energy was gathered in stages by collectors on one side of the world, where it was transferred to the planetary core. There, the quintessence was contained by both the planet's natural magnetic field and the synthetic containment field. The latter was maintained by machinery the First Order had installed within the planet's crust. Because the planetary magnetic field was incapable of containing such a huge amount of energy just by itself, the First Order installed a thermal oscillator. The final piece of the puzzle was a massive hollow cylinder that lay in the planet's crust and penetrated the containment field. Not only would it fire at the designated targets, the tube helped absorb the massive power generated by the firing process, which would otherwise cause massive ground quakes all across the world. Unfortunately, the weapon had a weak spot. If the containment field oscillator was destroyed when fully charged just before firing, then the energy would be released throughout the planetary core, causing the surface to gradually collapse into it. As Starkiller Base began to run at full capacity, it slowly blocked out sunlight until the star was completely extinguished, leaving the planet in full darkness. So that the weapon could fire, First Order engineers would filter through dark energy from the containment field to the hollow cylinder. In this process, the dark energy morphed into a state called phantom energy, where it would leave the planet, tear a hole through hyperspace and travel along a linear path. The weapon could fire all across the galaxy and nearly instantaneously hit its targets. The station's personnel labelled the dimension in which the phantom energy beam travelled as sub-hyperspace. Though only planets could stop the beam, meaning asteroids and ships wouldn't halt the progression, the clearest path had to be chosen. In addition, Starkiller Base had to be tilted to the correct angle in order to hit its target. On impact, the phantom energy's heat caused the planet cores to ignite, resulting in the formation of a star. Furthermore, due to the space-time disruption that the phantom energy caused, it could be seen over many thousands of light years away. Starkiller Base had a planetary shield capable of withstanding any attack. Also, it couldn't be penetrated by ships travelling at sub-light speed. However, the shield had a weakness. It had to refresh every so often, a custom for any shield of its size. This meant a ship could bypass the shield by exiting light speed inside it. Furthermore, in the event of a shield malfunction or sabotage, the planet would be vulnerable until engineers resolved the problem. If it could not be repaired, then shield control would have to be overridden, a time-consuming process. The First Order spent decades finding a planet which met every specification for their superweapon. The planet was initially scouted by squads of snow troopers, who destroyed all living native life forms that could interrupt the project's construction. Around three decades after the Battle of Endor, the planet was called Starkiller Base and it became the First Order's unofficial headquarters. Though it was similar to both Death Stars, Starkiller Base was far more powerful and twice the size. The incredible technology advancement was down to the First Order's mentality that because the Galactic Empire had fallen, they needed to become better in order to fulfil their goals. Starkiller Base fired for the first time shortly before the Battle of Takodana, displaying its incredible power. After draining a nearby star, General Hux, by order of Snoke, fired at the capital of the New Republic, Hosnian Prime. Ultimately, the planet was destroyed as well as every other in the Hosnian system. Furthermore, the New Republic's fleet was wiped out, proving to be a massive blow to the First Order's opponents. 
With the New Republic destroyed, Starkiller Base was charged once more to fire at Dakar, the Resistance's headquarters. If the planet was destroyed, then nothing would stand in the way of the First Order ruling the galaxy. Unfortunately, the Resistance exploited Starkiller Base's two weaknesses. Firstly, the Millennium Falcon managed to bypass the planetary shields by travelling at light speed. Whilst on the ground, the crew were able to disable the shields, allowing for Resistance X-Wings to attack. Secondly, the Thermal Oscillator's conduit was destroyed by Resistance pilot Poe Dameron, causing the planet to implode. With the energy that was built up to fire at Dakar, Starkiller Base gave birth to a new star, replacing the Ice Planet. Though Starkiller Base was superior to the Galactic Empire's two Death Stars, the First Order couldn't stop it from failing also. The technological advancement did manage to cause devastation to the galaxy, but not to the degree the faction intended. Now it's time for this week's question. With Starkiller Base destroyed, what will the First Order do next? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and for more Star Wars The Force Awakens lore, keep a lock to your... To the Kangazar! There are a ton of plot holes in the Star Wars films, so let's take a look at the top 10. Number 10. What Death Star Plans?